And what does that mean in practical terms to us as human beings? Well, remember, enlightenment is always the, in one way or the other, enlightenment is always the experience of consciousness beyond ego. So what, what, so what we can see here is if we, look at, if we look at the experience we're having from the perspective of, 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 a, of a cosmic process, we see that, well, my experience in this moment, your experience, of this, my, my experience, my physical experience, my biological experience, my psychological experience, my spiritual experience, has all been produced by a cosmic process that had a beginning in time more or less 14 billion years ago. And so when you and I realize that, that all of our experience, including our culturally created perspectives, all have been cr created by a cosmic process that had a beginning, it becomes very exciting because we realize we're part of something very big. And of course, evolution, evolution means we're part of a process that's going somewhere. We're all part of a process that's going somewhere. And, and the point is when we realize that, we realize that the experience of consciousness and cognition, of, of embodiment and consciousness and cognition that we're having right now is part of a process that's going somewhere, that my own experience of consciousness and cognition is the leading edge, as far as we know, of a process that's going somewhere, then, then, the, then what becomes very exciting is the choices I make, the actions I take, then can either become an expression of evolution and action or... If we're, if we're acting out of, uh, from, from an expected in w a perspective in which we're not evolutionarily enlightened, our, our consciousness and our will is trapped within the world of the psychological so, self. So what is evolution in action to you? How do you see that? Well, as I'm saying, for, for, for most people who don't know this, their own will, their own higher will, is really trapped within no, the, I understand their that, own psychological I'm experience. the practical side of evolution in action. Uh, well, this, okay, uh, we <laughs> the thing is, the, the practical side of it is, is, is important, but, I, w but before we get to that, what I'm, I, what I'm trying to create a picture here where if, if we understand that, that God is the evolutionary impulse, the, the desire to exist, and of course, if you were God and you decided to create a manifest universe in your own image, would you have any doubt? Would you have any fear? Would you have any hesitation? No. Why? Because you're God. Human beings experience doubt, fear, and hesitation. But if you were an absolute principle that made that decision to take the leap from formlessness to form, from being and becoming, once you took that leap, you would have absolute conviction that you wanted to be here. You'd have no doubt that you want to be here and you want to create the universe, you want to create the world, you want to become within manifestation. So when we as, as, as for example, postmodern, the very culturally conditioned postmodern uh, human beings, awaken to this kind of cosmic conviction, about being alive. It frees us. It frees us spiritually. It frees us personally. It frees us practically. It frees up all, our, all of our life energy because for most of us, as I was saying, our energy is, is really trapped within this, uh, with a personal psychological prison. I, I understand and this And within energy. a culturally yeah. conditioned worldview that doesn't really yeah, accept the fact that we're going somewhere. Yeah. So when we, we are liberated from that prison, what we discover is that we want to be here. Life is good. The desire to exist is good. I want to be in this yeah. world, and I want to make this world a better place Intelli because that's why I'm here. Yeah, we want to be intelligent about how we live our life. Well, we, of course, we want to be intelligent. Absolutely, of course, we always, we always want to be intelligent, I hope. But the thing but is, we're we, not most of the time. You know, as a human well, race, we're doing well, the we're not unintelligent in, things. Well, I think it's because we're, we're, I think the reason that most often people don't live what we could call intelligent lives is because they're, they're trapped in a psychological prison right. and, and also yeah. in culturally conditioned values and perspectives. They don't, they don't embrace the truth of the fact that we're part of a cosmic process that's going somewhere and that at the ultimate level of the self, we really are already very much in, we're, we're, we have been involved in this process all along. We just haven't known it. But the thing is, when we awaken to the, what's this, the, the evolutionary impulse I'm speaking about, it, at the level of the, of, of, of the sense of I, the deepest sense of I, that we realize that this is my process and I already care deeply about where we're going because it's mine. There's a sense, because there's a sense of ownership because I am, I'm not separate from the energy and intelligence that initiated the, the creative process and that's been driving it. And so it's like we wake up from the illusion of the ego which says that, that I'm here and the process is there. I am the process. This is, mm -hmm. is non-dual evolutionary perspective. I am the process, and therefore I'm not ambivalent about taking responsibility for being here. And that changes absolutely everything, and to me it's the ultimate solution to the postmodern predicament, where we have the isolate, isolated, alienated postmodern self who's trapped within this personal psychological prison, this culturally conditioned perspective, 
in which we see the world through a lens of nihilism and cynicism and existential confusion, that falls away and we realize this is it. This is it and I'm here and now now's the moment when I have to give it everything I've got because there's no, you know, because from an evolutionary point of view, time's all we got. So what does ev giving it everything It looks Scott really means. good. It looks really good. <laughs> Tell us about it. What? Tell us about well, it. Well, I mean, it looks like, what it would look like is I think that those human beings, you know, past and present, who have lived uh, 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 lives that expressed uh, 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 and, uh, a, a very full, uh, unselfconscious uh, commitment to the evolution and upliftment of this process, and whose presence here on Earth uh, was a source of great inspiration and conviction for other people. That's what it would look like. I mean, I, I, I don't want to limit it to any one particular because we all have different gifts. We all have our unique gifts to give. What this is going to look like is going to look different depending upon the individual because we all have different ways of expressing this. But it, it will look it will look like an unselfconscious creative passion uh, and, and the individual will be expressing uh, a deep conviction that life is good, it's very good to be here, and that it, and, and that there, that, that, that it means something to be alive, that there's an inherent purpose in being here, and it's up to us to, to prove that that's the case through our own relationship with the process. And what does that mean? our relationship with the process. I'm trying to get something practical here. I, I know, and I often get, I mean, I often get asked exactly the question you're asking me, but the thing is, if I make it too practical, I think the, enorm the enormity of what, I'm spe I'm, of what I'm pointing to, I feel, gets lost. Um, uh, what would, it, you know, what it looks like, it looks like an individual who's living for a much higher purpose, Mm -hmm. who's no longer living, living to have and get and become merely for themselves, but they, but, they, but they are living as an expression of the energy and intelligence that created this whole process. So they're realizing we're all connected? Well, it's bigger than we're all connected. It's not just the kind of, the, the, kind of the, 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 the 60s idea of we're all holding hands in one big no, happy I, family. Don't, don't worry, no, 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 because it means, no, I mean, it means no, but it means that we're part of a process that's going somewhere. So if we're, so let's say, if it's, evolution means we're part of a process that's going somewhere. So if we're part of a process that's going somewhere, am I going somewhere, or am I? In other words, if 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 I say I'm going somewhere, that means ten years has passed, and I'm there, there's obviously there's discernible evolution and development that's happened, and if that's because the point is. From a non, the, the, the non-dual understanding of all this is that God evolves as we do. That in the, in the, in the, tr in the traditional way of thinking, the, 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 absolute, the absolute or divine principle somehow exists outside of oneself, out there somewhere. But when we realize that the, if God's the energy and intelligence that initiated the creative process and is driving the creative process, God is, is, uh, is as evolved as we become and if we are the leading edge of the very process, then God, we could, we, you could say that God's depending upon us to take the next step. And to me, that's the most exciting part of this, pro this new evolutionary spirituality, this new evolutionary enlightenment, this new perspective, is when we realize that God, God ev evolves as we do. That's, that's, this is, this is non-dual evolutionary enlightenment perspective. Then if we realize that's true, then we, we suddenly feel that, uh, 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 a great moral obligation, a spiritual obligation to get going because if we don't get going, the energy and intelligence that initiated the creative process and is driving the creative process is going to be stuck as we're stuck. And so when you get that, you realize we don't really have time to, to remain stuck, lost, and confused, and frustrated you know, within our own psych, some psychological hell because, because God or the energy and intelligence that initiated the creative process and is driving it is depending upon us to take the next step, so he or she that can can step can can move forward, and that the whole process can move forward. So the the the, 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 the process of evolution then depends upon us, in the in 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 the most r real sense of what that means, and the implications for us of, as individuals is, are is are absolute are enormous, and so. In terms of transcending ego, what, what could be a more profound impetus to transcend ego than to realize that the evolution of the process is depending upon us? And we're, unless we're willing to let go of our small egoic hang-ups and preoccupations, God is, is stuck. It's almost like being in a, in a train car.